Haircut. Hot takes. Yankees finish the season 15 and 147. Huh, that is just outrageous. You gotta keep it realistic. I think they'll win about 20 games, one for each year of Brian Cashman's next extension. Mookie Betts' decline started in 2021, and he'll be a replacement level player by 2025. Listen, I asked for the hot takes, and you, my friend, have delivered. I'm gonna have to disagree. I think 2022 was Mookie's best year since 2018, and I think he'll basically be the same guy going forward, except he plays shortstop now? What's going on with that? Jorge Mateo starts the All-Star game. I like it, but I think Wander Franco and Bo Bichette are just too strong of a competition for him. Bo Bichette gets the strength of an entire country voting for him. Wander Franco, meanwhile, plays for what has been the best team in Major League Baseball so far. It's going to be tough for Mateo to sneak in. Kelnick finishes top 10 in AL MVP and is the best player on the Mariners. Listen, as the number one Jared Kelnick hater, I was still right about 2022, by the way, I must say he looks incredible right now. It's just a total career turnaround. Very excited about that. But I must say the best player on the Mariners is and will always be Justin Topa. Mariners are frauds. Rangers will win the division. The Mariners have this weird opportunity to just be the 2021 Milwaukee Brewers, a team which, mind you, won 95 games. They did it with a crazy three-headed pitching monster, some great defense, and an offense that makes you think, boy, I wish those guys could just hit a little more. I'll give you that the Rangers are a lot more fun to watch, at least at the moment. Cody Bellinger's hot April will continue for the rest of the year, and he'll get fifth in MVP voting. I'm gonna come in here with a hot take of my own. I actually remain just a little bit unconvinced so far. I know he's making way more contact, which is great, but he's made some sacrifices. He's posting the lowest average exit velocity of his career. Look, if going forward he's a 110 OPS plus great defensive center fielder, that's a good gamble by the Cubs, but that's not top five MVP. We're witnessing the worst team in Colorado Rockies franchise history, which is a hard feat to accomplish. Here's the measuring stick. In 2012, they lost 98 games, and their best player by baseball reference war was Rafael Betancourt. I feel like this year's Rockies squad has just enough not terrible pitching to barely avoid that fate. Man, I wish Brandon Rogers was healthy. Key Brian Hayes will be the Gold Glove winner this season. I'm gonna have to agree at this rate. Nolan Arenado simply isn't hitting well enough to win the Gold Glove. Think about that sentence. I will convince my wife to come back to me even though she stole my money and moved to Brazil with her boyfriend. What bothers you more here? The fact that the kids call him dad or the fact that they call him dad in Portuguese? The Diamondbacks have the best future in MLB, and Corbin Carroll will win an MVP in three years. For me, that's close, but no cigar. I would say the Dodgers and the Orioles are just a little bit better, both at the major league level and in the farm system. As far as Corbin Carroll goes, I actually see him more as a guy who will be like a perennial top 10 MVP finisher, but never actually winning it outright. There's a difference. Manessas wasn't a lie. Give him time. I agree. I don't think last year was all that fluky. I think if you hit the ball hard enough and you make enough contact like Joey Manessas does, things will eventually work out. By the way, did you know he played for a Japanese team just because he loves Goku? Brent Rooker will be the most valuable hitter available at the deadline. He looks so good right now. The underlying data looks so good right now. He just hammers the baseball. The question is, will the ace trade him? And I know that's maybe a crazy question, but he's not even arbitration eligible next year. Maybe they hold on to him. The Royals are not nearly as bad as they're letting on. I don't see any reason they can't fight for third in the AL Central. I actually picked the Royals to beat their win projection next year, and so far, they look very bad. I was really hoping on some breakouts from guys like Michael Massey and Kyle Isbell. They look atrocious. The Chris Bubich thing sucks. However, I hate to be wrong, so I'm going to agree with you. Jake Cronenworth is an all-star and wins the gold glove at first base. Absolutely not, but at least he fields throws in front of the bag. Shout out to Eric Hosmer. Also, with the way Matt Carpenter's hitting, it's possible Jake Cronenworth will turn into some sort of Ben Zobra super utility. A lot of name dropping in this one. Dubon batting title. You know, I've always felt like Mauricio Dubon looks like he's ticklish.
Is that a weird thing to say? I feel like if I tickled him, he wouldn't be able to keep a straight face. Lars Nootbaar is going to post a 20% walk rate on the season. Noot, noot. I'll take the under on that. You know, Juan Soto is the only guy who can really consistently do that, and Newt Bar chases a little more than him, makes contact a little less often than him, and just generally doesn't quite intimidate pitchers to the same degree. 15% though. I could see that. Taylor Ward will battle back from his slump to post the classic 3-4-5 slash and a top 10 MVP finish. His underlying data does not look as bad as his surface level triple slash, which is of course code for, I drafted him way too high in fantasy, so have no choice but to believe you. The Rays are real, and the ale is easily theirs to take. Um, why would the Rays care about ale? They already have mead.